I want to continually keep welcoming all members who have so far joined in. I want to appreciate Elder Joseph Seboa. Elder Joseph Seboa, thank you for joining. May the Lord bless you. Brother Wambuga Charles, thank you for joining through. Brother Biamukaba Robert, yeah, we really are to appreciate you for joining through. In a special way, I want to appreciate the Northern Uganda field for coordinating and leading us through yesterday. It is still their day, and uh, very short to have them back still uh, continue guiding us. We're very glad that yesterday the session was so wonderful. It was really very good, uh, courtesy of organizational coordination from the Northern Uganda field. Uh, if you have a friend and he has not yet already signed in, Brother Seboa Joseph, Brother Biamukama, text him, text her, perhaps to inform him to join so quickly and allow us begin uh, very smooth. I want to, in a special way, appreciate the friends already on uh, WhatsApp group. Okay. 
Thank you. I've already received the notification from Brother Oscar Ogwal. Northern Uganda Field is getting to the room, the studio, where they were broadcasting yesterday. We hope shortly you will be signing in and lead us through this program. Uh, especially, I will keep appreciating Pastor Kojo Lambert. I'm very glad. If all leaders were like you in keeping time, we'd be very, very grateful. We'd be very, very grateful. But nonetheless, uh, thank you for keeping uh, time and showing that good example. Moses Mohumza, especially want to appreciate you as well for joining through. A quick reminder to every other person, every other member who is not yet logged in, if he's your friend, encourage them to come through and allow us to start. Yeah, Brother Moses Mohumza, I can see shortly are you looking very good? Eh? May the Lord bless you. Thank you for coming through. Yeah, you're welcome. Elda Sebwa Joseph, could we have a look at you? Could you kindly turn on your camera? We look at you. Oh, okay. Brother Wambuga Charles, if you're there, could you turn on your camera? Uh, Brother Biamuka Robert, you'd literally also turn uh, on your camera so that we can have a look at you. If you already, you said. Uh, in a special, we want to continually appreciate uh, appreciate uh, Miss Ruth Tassinka for, for the energy, for the time, and for acceptance to serving the Lord and working as our secretary. She's very good, good lady, very uh, good leadership skills. You know, as very good example, I've been noted earlier on. She, she always logs on very early and she keeps coordinating us. Oh, uh, Elder Sebwa, your video is coming through and we can clearly see you. Thank you, thank you very much, Elder, for keeping through. Good afternoon, Brother Elder Joseph. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Hey, thank I'm you. glad to hear from you. Absolutely. I'm yeah. Very glad. I'm very glad too. Elder Wambuga Charles, yeah, thank you. Elder Wambuga Charles, thank you as well. Uh, your video is coming through, and we are very delighted that you are still part of us, and you've always been part of us. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. We appreciate what you are doing, sir. True, true, true. Thank you for keeping time. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, Moses, well done. <laughs> Can we hear from you? Hello. Hello, brother. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to be here once again. And see my pastor, Kojo Lambert from Renzori, Pastor. Mm. What's he with it? The Wambuga from Ginger. That's in the Karus in Kravira Mukamori. I'm happy to be back here with you. Oh, why? Your mom was that? Never in Mukwano. I wish you the best session today. Welcome. Thank you for those remarks, uh, Brother Moses Mohumza. We're glad to have you. Uh, yeah. In special, we also want to greet our elder, Musa Waiswa. Elder, thank you very much eh, for starting the meeting. We hope other people are still coming through. It is still time for signing in. And those of us who have already signed in with our entity, may the Lord bless you. Yeah, I've, I've again have received participant, uh, Brother Sam Okidi, that is all along from Northern Uganda field. Northern Uganda field, we're very, very glad. Yesterday we received very good uh, training session, cut us of your coordination. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for the music. It was so wonderful. So, so wonderful. We hope to have the choir again uh, coming through later on uh, presenting the good, good music. Eh? Brother Sam Okidi, please, if you're on, could you turn on your microphone and I greet you. Elder Sam. Yes, uh, the camera is, the microphone is on. Uh, brothers, aha, uh -huh, very glad. The video has come through. Good afternoon, brother.
Could you unmute? Yeah. Good afternoon, Brother Sam. Okay. Brother Sam, I hope I will have you, please. <laughs> now, in a special way, we also received uh, Sister Navalime Emeli, Mili, uh, Sister Navalime, thank you for coming through. Uh, we hope that we shall learn more together while you're around. Uh, friends, I already received a very positive remark from our MC, he's coming through. Brother Biamu Robert. yeah, good afternoon. We really see uh, the, the, the text in the chat room. Brother Biamu Robert, may we greet you once more? Could you turn on the camera and greet participants, comrades who have joined through? Mm -hmm. The video is coming through, brother. Good afternoon. We can't pick you. Your camera is muted. You spoke earlier when it was muted. Okay, all right, all right. It's okay. Uh, with special thanks, I want to inform you, friends and comrades, we've received our MC as officially logged on, uh, brother Ogwal, Ogwal Oscar. Brother Oscar, I want to officially invite you and give you this platform to coordinate, us, awesome. coordinate us. Thank you for coordinating <laughs> us yesterday. We really want to enjoy and learn through your coordination. Brother Oscar, take on immediately. It's my own. Sam, you can use the microphone. Wow, it's amazing. Um, Brother Dennis, thank you very much. You're welcome. Brother. You're welcome, brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, time has not been on our side. I'm so happy to see that it's been long. I know when you were having the uh, uh, Camporea at Renzori, we turned it. I'm happy to see you again today. Um, I can see Wambuga Chow, Mugumoza. Aha, this is another long time friend. You're most welcome to the platform, Madam Esther, and see Ruth, Yamukama Robert. And it's amazing to have you people on board. Um, yesterday we had a very interesting session. It was so amazing. And uh, today our choir is on the way. So they are going to be there quite a little, but that can't prevent us from pushing on the program. Um, I received our program outline from Brother Dennis and Ruth. They sent me copies. And uh, I want to welcome everybody. We are going to get through our program and then our choir will come and take us through the song. People for enjoying the music yesterday. Me personally, I also enjoyed it. It was so amazing. The songs were just wow. <coughs> and uh, I want to welcome everybody, please. Others who are joining, you can join us through the link. I'll always be giving you updates. So far, we have 16 members. Um, yesterday, we had over 60 plus. I see the number increasing. Um, is this quarter enough for us to begin? Dennis. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> Can you hear me, Dennis and Ogwa? 
Yes, we hear you, Mama. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> You're looking very good. Yes, and the, was, the sound is so nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it sounds good. True. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Ma. Very well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what about visible? I was wondering that coming. I don't know what the echo was. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I, I just wanted to test my volume so that we can start. Okay. All right. You request uh, we are going to use a screen. Now, um, Madam Esther. Yeah. Madam Esther, are you there? I am there. I can hear. Now, you'll help us do a screencast for, for Elder Wena when his time comes. Eh? Model six. Okay. Model six. Yeah. Okay, module six. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. So I think we are good to go. Our choir will come, they'll find us on the way. Yeah, they'll find us on the way. All right. <clears throat> this is great. Um, let me welcome everyone else again to this platform. This is a welcome remark. Thank you for attending. Thank you for being here. And we hope that your day started well. And it's so amazing that God has still kept us this far. We really want to thank him very much. Um, before we can open up our session, I told you our choir is coming to join us. You'll be able to hear that music. <coughs> We are going to have an opening prayer. Brother Sam, are you online? Brother Sam? Yes, yes. Sam. We are going to have an opening prayer from Brother Sam Okidi, then we can start off our program. Brother Sam? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Offer us okay. an opening prayer. Let us humble, then we pray from wherever we are. Almighty Father who art in heaven, we are privileged this afternoon, God, for your providence that you have granted unto us. You have given us yet another opportunity to come before you when we are going to descend from you. We ask for your intervention in the person of the Holy Spirit, that we may be guided for understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam, for that prayer you offered. Um, on our programs here, we're supposed to be having a presentation for our dear Pastor Lambert Kojo. Um, I therefore take this initiative to welcome you very much. And thank you for being available online. I am pushing the mantle in your hands and then you can take us through uh, this package. Pastor, you must welcome. Yeah, yeah we want to welcome Pastor Kojo. His microphone is muted. We want to, we want to welcome Pastor Kojo. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Oscar, for leading us as our MC today. We want to welcome Pastor Kojo in a special way to, to bring us module five. Module five is another interesting module that we are going to cover this afternoon. So Pastor Kojo is our dear leader. He's uh, the youth director for Renzori Field. When we talk about Renzori Field, we mean areas of Kasese, Bundibujo, Mpondwe, down next to uh, Congo. So we, we want to thank uh, God for enabling him to spare us time to come and present module five. How we can teach module five to the ambassadors and how the ambassadors can live a practical life of Ambassador uh, Module 5. So at this moment, I want to welcome Pastor Kojo. 
Pastor Kojo, you will just unmute yourself and then you'll go down there on your screen where there is share screen. You can click on the uh, down there where there is share screen, Pastor. Uh, Pastor Kojo, we are not hearing you. you. You unmute yourself. Oh, yes. Thank you, Madam Esther, for that wonderful opportunity you have given to me. I'm glad to be part of this program. Uh, good afternoon, dear members. Are you hearing me? If you are hearing me, can you wave to me? Wave to me if you are hearing me. Thank you, welcome. Uh, we want to thank God for this program that we can still conduct such a virtual meeting amid this COVID-19. Thank you, Madam Esther, for organizing this. Members, uh, you are most welcome. In a special way, I want to welcome my fellow uh, directors. I can see Adam Bok Moses and others, the master guides, you're most welcome. Muboki, I can see you, you're most welcome. Uh, I am happy to be part of this program whereby we can still operate through digital. With me, I have a master guide. And uh, before I, I, I begin, allow me to bring him actually for just a brief greeting to you. Hello, members. He's welcome. We want him to be an SYL also. <laughs> yes, he is. He's Master Guide Canyon Joffrey. Okay. At the same time, he's our, um, our managing director of Light FM Radio. So we are glad to be with you. Uh, actually, Madam Esther, uh, I want to, uh, to thank you in a special way for implementing what Paul says, that in season and out of season, we need to do the work of God. Thank you for organizing this meeting. Actually, you have, uh, you have reminded me of one thing. When Paul says in, in 2 Timothy 2, 9, when he said, while in the lockdown, the work of the Lord is not locked. And indeed, I have seen that the, law, the work of the Lord is not locked, whereby we can still operate through uh, such a media system. Now, before we begin, allow me to invite Brother Kanyonyi Master Guy to pray for us as we begin our presentation this afternoon. Thank you. Okay, let's pray, members. Our kind Father in heaven, we thank you for this precious moment. We want to invite you to be with us as we are discussing all the issues concerning the youth ministry and your ministry. May God be with us all in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was given Model 5, which is about a, a lifestyle and, voc and vocation. But before that, I want to remind you of what we have been discussing throughout the uh, uh, the entire program of this of this of this course of this training. Madam Esther, thank you for bringing us this ambassador class. Uh, the Seventh Adventist Church is committed to understand and training its youth for leadership and service for. To humanity. Actually, you are a leader who is implementing the church programs. We, we, are, we thank you for that uh, courage, for that. Uh, actually, amid this such a COVID, uh, such a situation, such a, uh, such a crisis, we can't imagine that you can still organize a program like this one. Uh, yeah. Pastor Sento, when he was presenting last Sunday, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, we are hearing you. 
you of what um, Pastor Sendongo was presenting last Sunday. When he was introducing an ambassador, who is ambassador, actually he reminded me two things I want to tell you about those two things. That an ambassador generally represents a country or a cause. And I went ahead reading about what it means by being an ambassador. And I realized that a Christian ambassador is a representative of another kind. They represent the, the values, the principles, culture, and law of the kingdom of God. They stand for the, for the character and purposes of the king of this, of, his, of this kingdom, Jesus Christ himself. That means an ambassador is someone special, is not a mere person. And that, that being in this class, being called an ambassador, you are a special person. And that's why when an ambassador of a certain country commits an offense, actually he's eligible for imprisonment, imprisonment for life. And that means it is a task that needs someone who is mature, who, 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 who at least who knows what to do. And thank you, Madam Esther, for actually organizing this, uh, uh, this program, such that we may remind ourselves of who is an, an ambassador. As a pastor, when I was reading the Bible, tracing the word ambassador, when you read the book of, of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, it tells you that an ambas we are ambassadors of Christ. In other words, we are representatives of who? Of Christ. And we, for this matter, therefore, Paul says that we don't need any other in letter of introduction. This uh, being in this class, that is enough such that you, you don't want to, to be given a letter of introduction because you know what you are doing. And that's why our leaders, Madam Esther, through your office, thank you for introducing us to the models, modules of this, of this club. An ambassador club, uh, the, the ambassador club, we were told uh, that the ambassador club resource is based on seven uh, foundation that are considered as essential to meet the development needs of our young people between the age of 16 and 21. And I'm glad that I was given uh, module, seven, module five, which I want to uh, uh, share with you this afternoon. Uh -huh. Let me share this one with you now. Uh, I know, I, I, are you still hearing me, Madam Esther? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we Hello? can hear you, Pastor. Yes, I want to know, our network here is yes, not- Yes, we can stable. hear you. I want it to, I want it, you know, some, some, uh, some of us who are- Hello, Pastor, one. we can- Yeah, okay. we can hear you. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, we are handling uh, model five. Model five of the seven models. The first one is Christ centered. We realize that a, an ambassador must be a Christ centered person or disciple. Uh, now, model two, we realize that leadership is also another, another step that someone who is in the ambassador class must undergo. Then the, the third one is a personal public. Number four, it is character and personality development. Uh, then, Number five, which I'm presenting about, it is lifestyle and vocation training. 
lifestyle and vocation training. You'll excuse me because my network here is not stable. I wanted to, I have, uh, I have shared with you, but it is not coming. You know, uh, these Wazuku things, sometimes uh, they are challenging, but you'll bear with me if you are listening to me. Uh, what do we mean by lifestyle and vocation training? Okay, As Pastor. We, yes. Did you yes. say you wanted to share the screen? Yes. Oh. I it's wanted to share the screen. There. It gives me launch meeting again. Okay, you 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 click up there, stop sharing, so that I can share from here. Okay, okay. Yeah, you click yeah. there, stop sharing, so that I can okay. share. Let me share for you. Okay, share it for with me. You know, you 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 are now my senior. Yeah, thank you, thank you, madam. You you can go on meanwhile as I look for okay. it here. We are trying, I'm talking about lifestyle and vocation training. What do we mean by lifestyle and vocation training? In fact, we are talking about the way of life, the standard of living, the routine of an ambassador. As we have talked that an ambassador is a representative of a certain country, is the representative of God, is the representative of Jesus Christ. Now, what should be the, the, waste, the lifestyle of that person? What should be the, waste, the, 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 the standard of living of that person? You know, sometimes some people pretend to be uh, someone when, when you are not the one. That's why when you see, sometimes some people do uh, all, uh, thank you, madam, now I can see the, 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 the screen. I can see it. Thank you for that, for sharing with me. Thank you, madam Esther. Ah, I am now happy. So. We are trying to talk about this one, lifestyle and vocation. What do we mean? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain what we mean by lifestyle. Uh, I'm saying we are just we are talking about way of uh, of life, standard of living, the routine. Uh, before you come, uh, you, you, we, we come to the four essentials of this. I want to tell you that. Uh, uh, these seven foundations of, 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 of ambassadors, they are intermarried. In fact, you will see one after the other one. In fact, there is no way you can live without the other. So they are intermarried. And they, 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 they are based on the 10 objectives of why the ambassador club is, uh, is given to us. Now, I want also to begin with the, the, the four essential elements now. Uh, when we talk about the, social, uh, the, the, the four essential elements, and, and as, as, as an ambassador, there are four things which are very important, which are very essential, you need to live by. One is spiritual uh, companion. Two is individual discipleship, discipleship plan. Three, their projects. You know, being an ambassador, you need to also to have that element, that aspect of projects. Then four, that social activity. Those are the four essential elements that an ambassador should live by. Uh, when we come to the outcome and evidence of learning, the, uh, the, the, the outcome and evidence of learning. I want to talk about uh, some important, the three H, the three H. You bring that slide of the outcome and evidence of learning. Majorly, we are talking about the three H, the head, the hand, and the heart. An ambassador, a real ambassador, a representative of a certain country or a cause, a Christian ambassador, a representative of, uh, of certain values, certain principles, cultures and, and laws. You need to, to know the three H. 
and these are the head, whereby the participant, as a participant or as a candidate or as a student in this club of an ambassador, you need, you know, the head uh, deals with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. There are three words when we talk about the head knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Sometimes you may be an ambassador, a trained one, thinking that you, have, you are under that. Uh, Uh, what do we mean by head, by an ambassador to, to, to have, uh, to live by three H? As some would say, for development, you need to expand your head rather than uh, expanding the, 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 the land. Number two, it is hand. In other words, before I go to number two, uh, as we deal with outcome and evidence of learning, when we talk about head, we are just talking about about uh, managing of and thinking. An ambassador, you need to be a thinker. You need to think beyond or outside the box. Number two, when we talk about the hand, you know, when you read the Bible, you know, I I I, I love reading the Bible, and I love referring to the Bible. When you read the book of Exodus, chapter four, verse two. God asked Moses, when Moses was complaining, and God asked him, what do you have in your hand? In other words, use what is in your hand. As an ambassador, what do you have in your hand? Use that one for the glory of God. Then number three, the three H. It is heart. Heart deals with the, the uh, the moment, I mean, I mean the, with the thinking, with the morals, values, and then relating and caring to others. So as an ambassador, you need to know the outcome and the evidence of learning. And if, can you bring another, another slide? Another slide, hearing voices, and the uh, guidance from the guts. What do we mean hearing voices and uh, guidance from the guts? When we talk about uh, God, we are just talking about emotional and, uh, and conscience. In other words, we are talking about hearing and guidance from the emotional or uh, and, 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 and conscience. As, 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 as an ambassador, you know, an ambassador, you're also a, a colleague, uh, you, are, you are also a leader. So you need to lead, not, not, not out of emotions, not out of, uh, not, not with cautious, not uncautious. Because of all the questions young adults have about life, what God wants them to do as a vocation is found in the top five, the top five modules. And those five, when we talk about five, Remember, we are talking about uh, lifestyle as number five. We are also talking about about a class center and uh, discipleship plan. We are also talking about leadership. We are also talking about personal and public small group. We are also talking about character and personality. Then we are also talking about lifestyle and vocation. So we are saying of all the questions young people, young adults have, have, have about, about life, what God wants them to do as a vocation is found in the top five. And that's why in today's workforce, young adults are likely to make significant shifts in their fields of work as many as three to five times. That of what? That's why in our culture, we need to explore the biblical principles of hearing God's voice. And that's why as we train the ambassadors, it also provides Bible stories of young people, how, uh, how young people also, uh, how 
God is calling for them. It is also provides Bible stories of young people how they follow the calling of God. So as we come to as, as ambassadors, as leaders of ambassadors, as also as leaders of other 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 youth clubs, we should remember that an iron sharpens an iron. Are you listening to me? You know, this one quoted what Proverbs, what one what wise man says uh, uh, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. Proverbs 27, verse 17, to those who are Bible readers, it says, an iron sharpens an iron. Who are the individuals? In fact, we need to know, who are the individuals in your life you look uh, up to? Do you have any mentor that you respect in a multiple area of your life? What do you mean? What do we mean? Who are your individuals in your life you look up to? Are they your friends? Are they your relatives? If they are, or are your relatives, are they good, good, good friends? Are they good? In this club, in this area of study, you need to know uh, who are your life, who are your mentors, who are your spiritual mentors, who are your uh, vocational mentors, who are an academic mentor, who are your relationship mentor. It is very important to know that because uh, when you read the Bible, you know, I like, I, I like the Bible as a, as, 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 a, as a foundation of what we are teaching. When you read the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says you need, you should not be uh, dismayed because bad characters corrupt good morals. Therefore, if you have a bad mentor, a spiritual bad mentor, then your spiritual aspect, your spiritual stand will not be well. If you don't have someone who is well equipped vocationally, you know, when we talk about vocation, we are talking about talent, we are talking about ability, we are talking about skills, we are talking about inclinations. What do you think could be other areas of life you, 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 you want a mentor to speak into or coach you? There are so many areas of life. We have the economic life stand. We have talked about that. We have the social aspect. We have the physical aspect. We have the religious aspect. We have talked about all aspects. Actually, here, we just want to uh, to talk that as you select a mentor, you need to be selective. You need to be careful. You need to, to know that a mentor will make you what you will be. Actually, you, you live and reflect what, what, what has meant, who, who mentored you. And that's why I love Madam Esther. Today you are introducing me in a digital uh, kind of meetings, whereby some of us, when you go to our backgrounds, it is, this is something we, we, did, we didn't know that we, we can even uh, test. So, madam, for this case, you are my mentor in this area. So, so, so who is your spiritual mentor as a, as a young person, as an ambassador? Who is your vocation mentor? I think, my brother, can you, you can talk about vocation because I, 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 I love you in, in when, when it comes to, to using our skills. I have this, this man as, as a technician. You know, when we talk about vocation, skills, what do we mean by that? Okay, thank you, Pastor Kojo. Hope you're hearing me. Um, when I talk about, uh, let me first talk about uh, disability of the mind. You see, when you talk about disability, some people think, that when somebody is disabled, it is physical. But when it comes to the economic aspect, some people are so disabled in a way that they cannot even discern what to do. Yeah. You see, we have so many resources around us. Mm -hmm. 
And when you look at these resources, mm -hmm. most of the youth mm -hmm. do not know how you can utilize those resources yeah. because they are disabled in their minds. Yeah. So if actually we change the minds, if we transform our minds, if we transform our thinking, then we can have, uh, we can have ambassadors who are economically upright. Thank you, Master Gair Kanyoni. For the interest of time, we want to go to another aspect, God-given gifts, talents, and tendencies. We want also to, we want to talk about this because I know we, uh, uh, we want to match with the time given. Uh, when we talk about God-given gifts, talents, talents, tendencies, what do we mean here? Some, some possesses natural tendencies or talents that they may develop for good or evil. Then there are, there are skills that one can learn with a degree of practice. That's your area, my friend. One of the ways God can guide us to our vocation callings is through our epitude. What do we mean by epitude? It is through our ability or skill or talent. In fact, we are saying that one of the ways God can guide us to our vocation calling is through our, our abilities, through our skills, through our, our, our talents. While it is true that just because we might be good at some things, we, die, uh, we doesn't necessarily mean we need to do it for a living. It is helpful to explore the various qualities that we have, that we have been blessed with. Mm. In other words, someone may be blessed with something, someone may be given opportunity, but not knowing that, uh, that, ability, that, that, that he has an, an opportunity. That's why as, as individuals, we need, that, we need to know that God gave us gifts and talents for a purpose. There's something I read here that we need to know from our, that he, can, he changes our, 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 our gifts, our talents for, for a spiritual cause. For instance, take an, take an example of the first disciples. When you read uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, 22, when God, when Jesus called the first four disciples who were fishermen, he called them with that talent. He saw the talent in them that since you are, uh, you are fishermen, come and follow me. You will no longer be fishermen, but you will be fishers of men. In other words, he used the same talent for his, for his cause. He can still use our gifts, our talents for his cause. Friends, what talent do you have? What gifts do you have? Why can't you use those gifts for the cause of the Lord? Friends, I have loved this, uh, this, uh, this, this, this course, the Ambassador Kalucham. It introduces us to be workers of God. Therefore, as we come to another slide, financial, financial wise and materialism. Financial wise and materialism. Madam Esther, can you give us that slide? Financial wise and materialism. Uh, as we look at, at this one, God wants us to be financially stable financial discipline. You know, of recent, Madam West, I, I, I want to thank you because there is another workshop you introduced to me too, and I learned something. That's financial literacy. I realized that most of our young people, they need to be trained how to use in, uh, in financial literacy. Sometimes, we are not disciplined with, with finances. We are not wise with finances. We are not, we, we are after materialism. 
I went ahead in in, in preparation for this. Uh, prevent. Uh, I, I realized that preventing debt and planning wisely are crucial to the success of young people handling the money they make. Brother, can you be prepared for this one? Because I love you in this area. The, the rate of materialism among young people grows in direct proportion to the efforts of advertisers targeting them. When advertisers promote product, products or services to consumers, the most responsive audience is young people between the age of 15 to 25. Why do you think this is the case? Let, let me first give you a, a highlight about what we mean about materialism. You know, as I, as I was reading, as I was making research about these things, I realized that our young people are caught in, three, in four, uh, they have four challenges, uh, which I've termed, they are engaged in, in four sins. One is materialism. What do we mean by materialism? Young people are after things that fits them. You know, someone said that the generation we are in is a, a, a fit me generation, not fit God generation. People are after things. People, young people are after materials. So, so, so they are looking for materials. So in, in, in looking for materials, they finally, uh, use, they don't use their finances wisely. Number two, they are caught, our young people are caught by another, another, another problem, which is individualism. Individualism, it is another, it is a result of materialism. And, 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 and when, when they say, I, I, me, 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 I can do it. Another thing, another thing is problematism. Actually, I went ahead of this because I just wanted to know why is financially, wh why is it that our young people are financial, are not, are not financial wise? It is because they are, they are after materialism, after materials. Therefore, as we go through this course of, of digital, I mean of, of, of ambassadors, we know we need uh, we need to orient our young people that on the biblical principles of money management, someone says that our young people, sometimes they fail in, in this area, we really fail. Brother Kanyo, do you, do you have something you can, you, you can, you, you can explain you know, very clear about financial wise and materialism? Thank you, Pastor. I want to tell my fellow youth that when you look at money, money speaks one language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, this money speaks to us. When you have your money in your pocket, that money is speaking to you directly. It is telling you, if you save me today, I will save you tomorrow. Exactly. Now, this, is, this, this brings us to how ambassadors should behave. People of, of 16 to 21. Yes, mm -hmm. 16 to 25. Mm -hmm. These people have a challenge. They do not know how to handle money. For them, take an instance mm -hmm. where someone does not even have a chick at home, mm -hmm. which may cost 5,000, mm -hmm. but he's buying an earphone, mm -hmm. earphone uh -huh. of 5,000. Uh -huh. Now, when you look at such an ambassador mm -hmm. who can buy an earphone of 5,000, mm -hmm. but when you get to his home, mm -hmm. back home, mm -hmm. there is not even a chick which will help him or her in the next in, time. In, in fact, you have reminded me of one uh, statement. Someone was saying that some, today our young people are ambassadors. They love to, to, to go with smartphones when they are not, uh, when they are not smart. smart. <laughs> Spiritually, they are not smart. Financially, they are not smart. Uh, socially, they are not smart, but they love to have smartphones. Why do you want to have a smartphone, yet you are not smart yourself in, in the head? Finally, here, this, this life, uh, this, uh, uh, this, this lifestyle. If, mm -hmm. if I may conclude my point, yes, is that uh, 
when I talk about finance, being financially wise, uh -huh. this is the formula. Mm -hmm. When you save your coin today, mm -hmm. it will save you tomorrow. Yes. Now, this is another formula that will help us to have our savings. Mm -hmm. Don't spend before you save. Don't that spend is, before you what? Don't spend before you save. Save and spend. That is the formula to have wealth. It doesn't matter how much money you make, but what matters is how, uh, how often do you save? In fact, when we talk about financial, financial wise and materialism, and in order to prevent debts, we need to, to go with that one you have talked to us. So thank you very much if you're following me. So we are saying preventing debt and planning wisely are crucial to the success of young people handling the money they make. The rate of materialism among, among young people grows in direct proportion to the efforts of advertisers targeting them. When advertisers promote products or services to consumers, the most responsive audience is young people between the age of 15 to 25. And that's why we love Madam Esther for bringing such aspects in Pastor, our presentation. If, if, if I may answer the question why these people are targeting this age bracket, mm. it's just one thing. Mm. This age bracket, they operate without a budget. These are people who do not make budgets for you, their expenditures. When he has a coin, when she has a coin in the pocket, mm -hmm. what he will do before he finishes the, the, the coin in the pocket, he will not mind about his life. But if you have a budget, mm -hmm. you see these advertisers are very wise. When you look at those advertising, you must know what they are intending to make. They want to make money. They want to, to harvest money from you. So if you have a budget at this stage, you will not be able to spend money anyhow. That I, you will be spending basing on your budget. That I, this, this, this lifestyle, uh, this model five, extra, it, 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 actually, it orients us about the biblical principles of money management as young people. For the interest of time, can we, can we move to another slide? To another slide, disappointment and unemployment. Madam Esther, Give us another slide. Give us another slide. Uh, disappointment and employment and unemployment. Give us another slide, Madam Esther. Okay. Oh, ethics. Ethics. Work ethics. Work ethics. Thank you very much. Work ethics before disappointment and employment. Let us talk about, about work ethics. What do we mean by work ethics? In fact, when you explain the word ethics, these are morals. These are beliefs, integrity. So when we talk about work ethics, we are talking about work morals. What are the morals? What are your morals at work, during work? It is important to, uh, to process the virtue of work in two conversations about calling and vocation. That humanity should work is is clear, is obvious. But why and how they should is something the Bible speaks to. Whether launching into professional work or working to earn your way through school or your uh, uh, school, uh, through school, through school, your work ethic matters. Friends, if you are listening to me, I want to, 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 to uh, to talk something about this. Uh, work ethics, work morals. What are your morals at your work? How do you behave at your at the work? Are you arrogant? Are you what? You know, I love one thing in the Bible. When you read First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirty-one. It says, whether you eat, whether you drink, whether you do what, do it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. This one, it says about morals, morality. Whether you eat, whether you drink, whatever thing you do, do it for the glory of God. And this is why 
uh, when you talk about work ethics, we are only talking about morals, behaviors. Pastor, if I may, if I may add on, on something. Mm -hmm. Uh, it looks like we lost him, Mama. Uh, Pastor's microphone is, is, is muted. Okay. This Pastor, unmute yourself. Okay, it's okay. All we right. have seen. Yeah. Is, that is Pastor you. still there? Yes. Okay, uh -huh. we have said. At work, mm -hmm. but they are at job, but without work. When you see the reason as to why people are not productive, it uh -huh. is because they don't mind about working. They mm -hmm. mind about jobs. Mm -hmm. When we are talking about jobs, I am telling you, my fellow youth, that when you look at people who come at, at jobs very late, those people, they don't have work. They are after their jobs. But somebody who is working must mm -hmm. have these three things One. in mind. One is attitude. Attitude. When you do not have attitude mm -hmm. for what you're doing, even if you spend there 12 hours, mm -hmm. you will not be productive because you will be wasting your time. To some point, you will assume that you, you are working. But when you don't have attitude, you will not work. You will be there just maneuvering, moving around, but not producing anything. Skills. Mm -hmm. if, that, that is vocation now. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you do not apply your skill, mm -hmm. my friend, whether you know how many skills, if you don't apply them, they will not, they will not help you. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you have the skill before you utilize it. Because if you went to school and you studied something, and you come out of this school when you cannot apply the skill that you went for, then you have wasted your time. Remember, we are talking about work and ethics. My friend, I'm telling you, mm. there are things that we need to, to have in mm -hmm. our minds. Mm -hmm. If you have the knowledge, mm -hmm. remember I've said there are three things. Mm -hmm. Attitude, mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. then knowledge. Yes. Those three words comes from the word ask. Mm -hmm. When you translate the word ask, you will realize that there is attitude, there is skill and knowledge. These three things are inseparable. You cannot separate them. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the skill and you don't have the attitude to apply the skill, still the skill will not work for you. When you have the knowledge and you don't utilize that knowledge to have what you have studied or to develop the skill, still these three things will not work. So we need, we better have the attitude, we have, the, we get our skills, then we apply the knowledge. Thank then you. we will be so productive. Thank you very much, Ms. Brother Kanyonyi. Uh, in, 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 in conclusion to that aspect, we are saying, we want to think, uh, I want to tell like, like Paul, in First Corinthians, like uh, chapter 10, verse 31, that whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Now let's go to disappointment and, uh, and employment. Disappointment and employment. We want to go to uh, disappointment. Disappointment 
disappointment and and in uh, and, and employment. What do we mean by this? Handling and employment is also a crucial thing we need to work up, talk about. Handling and employment is critical because we were meant to work. And when that becomes un unavailable, our sense of identity and purpose takes a blow. What does the statement mean? Uh, we were meant to work. You know, when we read the, the book of Genesis chapter one and chapter two, especially chapter two, verse 15, chapter two, verse 15, uh, when God created man, he placed him in the garden of Eden for two purposes. He gave, he gave him two responsibilities. One, he was a steward to keep it and to dig it. So man was given from creation, was given two responsibilities. He is a steward and he is what? He is to work. So handling and employment is critical because we were meant to work. And when that, that aspect becomes unav unavailable, our sense of identity, the reason why we exist, then becomes a, a disappointment. In, uh, inevitably, roadblocks come up in the life. And how to keep our head, to keep our faith, and keep working towards what God has called us for, to do is most important. I don't know whether you're getting me. What is, yes, it is true as human beings, as youth, as ambassadors, there are some challenges we go through. But those challenges may be may, may turn into opportunities. That's why he says, keeping up, keeping, keep working towards what God has called us to is most is the most important. Therefore, this session helps us as ambassadors to prepare for diversity. What do we mean by diversity? We may not have the same job, but we may be uh, united in diversity. Pastor, if I may add on, mm -hmm. you see, the thing of working is very crucial. Mm -hmm. God created us to work, mm -hmm. not for jobs. Mm -hmm. Somebody say they can chase you from the job, mm -hmm. but they cannot chase you from work. They can chase you from job? Yes. But they cannot chase you from work. As an ambassador, you didn't know that one. Yes, they can chase you from, from job. But not from work. Yeah. Some people are facing unemployment because people are not there for work, but they are there for jobs. And just prepare yourself. If you are maybe if your supervisor is just on your on your table, just look at the supervisor mm -hmm. at your table. Mm -hmm. You're given a certain responsibility mm -hmm. and you have not actually done anything. Now, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. You will be disappointed and get ready for unemployment. Yes. What do we mean? If you're given a certain responsibility, mm -hmm. you must perform. Because if you don't perform, if you do not work, mm -hmm. just prepare yourself for a disappointment mm -hmm. and unemployment. Look at this. Somebody wrote and said, mm -hmm. if you work, Without attitude, mm -hmm. you are good for nothing. Yes. You are good for nothing mm -hmm. because you don't have attitude. You don't have attitude to work. So mm -hmm. why should you say, I will, I shall work one time I shall, why can't you work that very thing? Yeah. So, so another, another one said, when you don't have passion, when you are not passionate to work, you are a hardworking fool. Mm. You are working, you are working, you are working, but you don't have passion. You look like I just want to go home. Mm. Meaning your performance will be low. So when your performance is low, you are just a hard working fool. And if I can quote the other gentleman, <laughs> he said you can be, be busy without a business. This, yeah. You are just there, you, you are working, but you're not passionate. Yes. Another one say, when you work and you don't apply the skills that you have got, mm -hmm. you are a clever fool. Mm -mm. When you work and you don't apply the skills, mm -hmm. you are a clever fool, mm -hmm. meaning you are, you are nothing. 
and we don't want to have ambassadors there's, there's who no are reason like that. As, there's no reason as to why you went there to go for that scheme. You are just a clever fool. You know what is supposed to be done, but you are not doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. We want to go to another another slide. Honest, uh, honest, uh, tithing and giving. Madam Esther, can you give us another slide? Yeah, we want to talk about this one also. Honest, tithing and giving. What do we mean by being honest? Honest, integrity, tithing, and giving. An ambassador of Christ ought to explore what it means to live honestly with integrity. Whatever your vocation or work, being someone who is sincere is expected of all who put on the name of Christ, hallelujah. What does it mean to be a generous follower of God? There is a distinction between simply giving and cultivating a generous, style, a generous lifestyle. I want to explain something here. You know, Brother Kanyoni and those who are listening to me, uh, somebody gave me a very good definition of uh, integrity. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget it. He said, integrity is charged by what one does in private, not in public. In other words, integrity is what one does in private rather than public. You, you, you are integrity. My integrity will be determined from a place, a private place where I am, what I will do in, in, in a private place, it's when they, they determine your integrity. That of as, as ambassadors, when we talk about honest, we are talking about trustworthy, being trustworthy. When we talk about integrity, when we talk about tithing and giving, we are talk, talking about the lifestyle as far as a leader or an ambassador is concerned. What do we mean? We are saying an ambassador of Christ ought to explore what it means to live honestly, honestly with integrity. Whatever one, whatever your vocation or work, being someone who is sincere is expected of all who put on the name of Christ. And what does it mean? to be a generous follower of, of God. There is a distinction between, between simply giving and cultivating a generous lifestyle. You know, as, as a pastor, I can also refer you to the Bible. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 5, when you re re read about the Macedonian people, that these people were generous, and what made them generous, they, their lifestyle, uh, they loved Christ. They sacrificed themselves to the Lord. And then they are giving, following. You, you can't give before you love Christ. You know, someone is letting me hope. It is easy to give without love. Hmm? Are you listening? It is easy to, it is possible to give without love. But it is not possible to love without giving. I don't know whether you are listening to me. It is easy. It is possible to give without love. But it is not possible to love without giving. Therefore, when you love Christ as an ambassador, giving, tithing will just come, will just be a lifestyle. And therefore, as an ambassador, I want to challenge you that let us love Christ first. And as we love Christ, as our personal savior, then giving, then tithing will just come automatically. Shall we go to another slide for the interest of time because I can see my time is up. Discipline and peer pressure. Discipline and peer pressure. Madam Esther, give us another slide. Discipline and peer pressure. Uh, you know, as young adults, 
or it is discipline. Discipline and peer pressure. Discipline and peer pressure. As young adults plan and prepare to work as God has called them, but without self-discipline, did you hear that? Self-discipline. You will not succeed. It, 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 it is connected with integrity. Self-discipline. God calls his people to be true, even if they, they must stand alone. This one reminds me of the statement by Ellen G. White in the book of education, page 51, 57. Actually, it is 57. Uh, uh, 55 in the, new, in the new edition, but in the old edition is page 57. Whereby, Ellen G. White states that uh, the world today is looking for young people who can stand and profess for their truth. The world is looking for such a young people. And this statement says, as young adults plan and prepare to work as God has called them for, but without self-discipline, you will not succeed. In most cases, our young people are bought. Someone has given you 500, 5,000, 2K, 5K, then because of that, you, you, you realize that you have shown your integrity. You see, Pastor, we have just talked about uh, materialism. Mm -hmm. When you look at the youth, when, when, you, when you look at the youth, mm -hmm. we have just talked about materialism. Mm -hmm. The youth ask for what they have not worked for. Yeah. That is, that is the problem. Mm -hmm. They ask for what they have not worked for. Someone say, hey, can you help? Just give me 1,000. Just 1K. Uh -huh. Now for what? What have you done? What have you done? So this is discipline. Uh -huh. And mainly the youth, uh -huh. they have a challenge. Uh -huh. They don't understand them. MC. MC, if you're getting me, I would invite you to take on because uh, we really lost Pastor. MC, please, if you can get me, I want to invite you to still take up. Brother Ogwa. Brother of one, can you get me? Okay, I think we lost Pasta. Mm, mm, mm. I think his internet, uh, I think. So, Are people still seeing my screen? Yes, Mama. I hope you also get me back. Uh, I can see it. Okay. I think Pasta was on the point of of Discipline and peer pressure. Maybe when he comes back, he'll, he will summarize. But I think our time is also up. Uh, uh, 
Our next slide is Sabbath and work ethics. Mami, I also lost you. I can't have you. I cannot hear you. Yes, so friends, uh, I've just talked to Pastor. He lost, they lost uh, their network. I think we will conclude here. So Pastor was trying to emphasize these issues. There is also need for Sabbath and work. Remember, we are handling Modi 5, and Modi 5 is about lifestyle and vocational uh, and vocational skills. I want to thank Pastor Kojo and brother, and and want to thank Pastor Kojo and the brother Kanyoni for leading us through that discussion and that presentation. So uh, about Sabbath and work ethics regarding our vocation our uh, the way we do at work it is very important if we were created to work then what is the ultimate purpose of the sabbath how does our need for work and our need for rest resemble the image of god this session Session third, identity in Christ through loyalty to Christ and faithful keeping of the Sabbath. This session 13 about Sabbath and work is calling back ambassadors. So as you talk here, as you present this session of Sabbath and work, let the ambassadors share their experiences. Let the ambassadors share what they go through. Let the ambassadors share their attitude, their knowledge about work and sabbath in case you, you can bring here very interesting discussions in case uh, the, a big offer of a job i mean a very highly paying job but the condition is working on sabbath what do you do so when you bring such such issues it will help to bring out the views and also build the faith of the ambassadors so as we talk lifestyle and vocational this module it will help our ambassadors to make better decisions to work their life standards and what they choose to do or what they choose to take so it's very very interesting um Session 14, this is the final session. Pastor was supposed to finish with this. It's about volunteering versus voluntarism. Volunteering versus voluntarism. We have considered the various aspects of vocational preparation from a spiritual standpoint. We call upon all ambassadors to respond to the call to volunteer. Whatever you choose to do for work, Know that the gift of your time and service make a unique impact for God. And so, in this final session 14, there are 14 sessions of 14 topics in module 5. We are all called to be witness in the world with deeds of kindness. And so as we as we go through, as we go through uh module five. We are asked to teach and to instruct ambassadors to do what we call voluntarism, volunteering versus voluntarism. So we need to put in the spirit of volunteering in our ambassadors. In Uganda, there is a common statement. When somebody is given a task, you will ask, what, well, how do I benefit out of this task? So this vocational and lifestyle module five teaches our ambassadors how they can do voluntarism, volunteering, how they can do a service without expecting a pay, 
how they can do a service willingly and happily because they're not serving themselves, but they are serving God. So friends, SYLs, we want to call upon you that as you teach this last module session, I mean this session 14 in module five, let us call our ambassadors to volunteer. Actually, the project in this will be now going somewhere to volunteer and do some task. So we want to remind you again that in each module, there's a project to do. So in the module five, there's a special project they're supposed to do. That shows all these 14 sessions, that bring out all these 14 sessions so that they can experience them practically. So friends, that is the end of this session of this module five, vocation and lifestyle. So it is a humble prayer that we teach our ambassadors these major key factors that we have shared that pastor has shared very well with us through the discussions they've called in module five. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. At this time, I want to call upon Elder Awena Francis to take us through the next uh, discussion presentation so that we can conclude this module. So Elder Awena, you're welcome. So Elder Wana, you're welcome so that you can begin. Friends, uh, dear, uh, our MC, let's, uh, the members here, uh, they write their questions and then we we'll respond to all the questions in module five and module six after Elder Awena. So I want to welcome Elder Awena is our youth director of Northern Uganda field. So today we'll be blessed to have Elder Awena presenting to us module six. Remember, there are seven modules. There are seven modules, and then today we are covering up to module six, then we'll conclude, and then we'll see what next we need to do. So Elder Awena, it is your time. Let me just begin a screen share for you. Elder, when are you there? It's Elder when are there? Oscar, Oscar, you are with Elder when? Yeah, initially, yeah, I think they, they were together. Yeah. Uh, it is time for Elder when let me share his screen just here. Oscar, it is time for Elder Awena to present so that we shall ask all the questions at once. Okay, all together. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Shwatwa. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Elder. We can hear you. You have about 30 minutes to go. <laughs> okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Thirty minutes is enough. Now, I want this presentation. So we have been disturbed by by the network. We are here uh, with with you on air to share this good experience as per Ambassador Club. Um, I'm going to have.
another model of it where we shall be looking at nurturing godly relationships. Uh, before we start, I beg we pray. Can we pray? Loving Father in heaven, we invite you to come and speak to us as we handle these issues to prepare us for thy mission. Guide us, bless us, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. In Model 6, we have a nurturing godly relationship. I want to begin by saying Ambassador Club is a very interesting club because it comprises of the age bracket, which is transitional from childhood to adulthood. Therefore, they undergo many changes in life, physical changes, mental changes, and spiritual changes. Here is where they seek to be independent. And for that matter, when you look at the word nature and good relationship, the word nature means to raise something in a way that can be more productive than it used to be. Now, in, uh, in agriculture term, we say it's like adding manure to a plant so that it produces more food and the, the yield becomes better. Now, in the field of Jesus' ministry, we are to nurture these young people to be more productive in servicing the Lord so that we don't lose them. They use their energy, their resources, and their time to serve God. Now, when nurturing, we need to be compassionate. We need to have compassion for them. We also need to be empathic for them. We need to empower them on how to go about with nurturing. And then we also need to be empathetic. Meaning that go wrong, we need to have on them in that can save them and can prepare them for. And also, we need to act redemptively. So, in the Do we still have Elder Wena? Uh, we lost him because of network, but I've seen the oh, yeah. I've seen. Brother Samuel Kidi, if you are closer to Elder, perhaps you give him the device to be using because you're not going off. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. As we as we get Elder Elder Awena back. We are, we are looking at module six. Module six, when it's about nurturing godly relationships. Remember, there are seven modules. When we talk about seven foundations, we are meaning seven modules. So seven foundations out of the seven, we are handling number six, nurturing godly relationships. And in nurturing godly relationships, remember every module has four essential elements. I believe by now we have talked a lot about these four essential elements. Even in module six, someone, the ambassador, has to make sure there's four essential elements are present. Spiritual companion, individual discipleship plan, projects, and then the social activities. And so friends, remember that you are being trained to handle ambassadors. 
And in the ambassadors expect you to ensure that there is a clear outcome and evidence of learning. Uh, make sure as uh, SYL, as ambassador leader, or the person you are coming to instruct the ambassador, they are clear, uh, the, uh, uh, the outcome and evidence of learning is very clear. That is the head, the hands, the heart. What will people, what will the ambassadors go at the end of it all? That is the head, the knowledge gained, the hands, the heart. Ensure that all the three H are achieved in handling or in any ambassador module. I will invite Elder Awena to begin from there. Am I on? Yes, Elder, you, are, you can move on from there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Awena. Yes. Um, I'm saying model six now. And the keyword in this model here that we are going to handle is reconciliation. When we talk of reconciliation, may, may you allow me to share the slide with the Hello? Okay, now we can continue. So, can you? Hello? The elder together, we can continue. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I was saying, the key word here is reconciliation. When we look at the word reconciliation, according to the writer here, it's saying, bringing is to bring into a changing relationship. Now, when we look at humanity, man in a winter, yet we didn't deserve. So it is out of love that the conversation can be done. So as we handle this class, this age group, they are full of error in their lifetime. So for that case, it is for us to be when dealing with them in order to reconcile them to God, who has also done the reconciliation to the elderly ones. Good purpose for this purpose is also to make us all earn eternal life in this case. So it is about bringing people into a right relationship with the God and each other through the cross of Jesus. We can only achieve this when we see Jesus on the cross as the only intercessor, the only savior, and the only redeemer. So Jesus did not die only for the elderly or for the children. But even for this age group, which is transitional, Jesus died for them. As leaders, we need to look at these people as they are also very much important to reconcile them to God so that God can use them at this for this certain time to serve Him. It is also about modeling the Christian life of forgiveness. My dear listeners outside there, this word forgiveness, it is now a myth in this 21st century, but the Bible still remains the same. Because today people say, I forgive, but I don't forget. But God is saying, as we handle these young people, when I say, let us forgive them. Now, when I forgive, for sure, I will also have been forgiven by God. If you want me to say, uh, Christian lifestyle of forgiveness, kindness, and radical love, even towards our enemies. We have enemies. So, as we handle this model, as leaders, we are called to be kind. We are called to have non discriminating love, even towards our enemy. For the sole redeemer is Jesus Christ. Now, when we go to the next 
multiply the same one one by one. My dear listeners outside there, sin is our greatest enemy. And it disconnects us, it disbands us, it discords us, it disrespects us, it disfigures us, it makes us unusual, it goes out of deformity. But here Jesus is saying, um, uh, according to the model of Jesus, he says we need to bring together people under him. Um, this what they're saying. Now, what the ministry encouraged was cutting across cultural, gender, traditional, and political status. A case in point is Mary Magdalene. This was a senior prostitute in this case by that time, of which we also have that people today. But now, we need to bring these people because they have the potential of us, irrespective of their doing. Now, when you look at Nicodemus, he was also a high level. But Jesus saw the potential in him and also invited him. Similarly, Paul, I mean, Saul, who eventually became Paul, was the greatest murderer. Uh, as we handle these young people, Jesus was calling on each at a time for a specific reason. Uh, and when we deal with this, Ambassadors. There are people who face a lot of challenges, like from homes, from schools, and from the church. Sometimes they deny the right. Sometimes they, they are disrespected. They are termed as evil people. But here, Jesus is trying to bring us together to serve Him so that both old and young can get involved in the ministry. So, that is, if we are to win, we must not judge them one at a time. We must handle them one at a time, not as a group. We should not generalize that ah, this club, they are all bad, all these children, they are all bad. But here, look at the person, go to the person, and handle the person as an individual because there is a, a potential in him. Now, I can talk reconciliation. Ambassadors, these are people who are good at convincing and making friends. They are advised not to be passive, but active. Now, here, lazy people, when we handle the head, the hand, and the heart, I want to handle the heart in this case to avoid the word, the word passive. Passive, these are people who are lazy. They are ever redundant. They don't want to participate in physical work. And they are burdened to people. When we see the example from Paul, during his time, when Jesus met him, he became active in the field of mission and also hardworking by making sense to support the mission. We are therefore Christ ambassadors through what we do. And God is making us a special people by changing us, by reconciling us from laziness to being active. From being sinners and to, to be right here. So we are to be of the gospel and also teach other people. So here we have a key word misdeed and misdeed. The question is which one? Which one? Which are what? Misdeed. In this case, <laughs> whatever whatever we do which is wrong is unpleasant to God. And what we miss doing, what we when we miss doing what is right now, when we are still able, it will be more dangerous to us. Because missing, we can be forgiven. But missing, God. is waiting for us to for our young people to come and serve the Lord so that we don't miss this opportunity of saving others. Now, and relating to enemies. Enemies are those who have caused us harm. Us or disadvantage to us. They are people. We are at odds with them. 
But as ambassadors, we become very healthier in proclaiming the gospel, even to the old people. Then, so we must not with the old people at heart. We must not forgive, and then Jesus also will forgive us. Because the statement here is saying, to hate is to become hateful yourself. Dear listeners, and the senior youth leaders who are outside there, I'm here saying, we must uh, Unforgiveness is like eating a rat poison and waiting for the rat to die. It is a quote written by Anne Lamo. But here we have a success, a, a success tip from uh, the business, a success from business a financial advisor. They say, uh, the financial advisors who are uh, trying to forgive in their business, business interaction with others, so their, their sales increased by 18 to 46 percent. Also, their level of participation increased by 24 percent. More, moreover, a 23 percent reduction in stress. My friend, I want to begin from this. When you go for this, the level of your stress increases. The level of your stress increases. But when you go for this, you lose customer, even production, because you are going to have the clients the way you are supposed to be. We are will clients for first day. We are will clients for eternal life, as we also win for ourselves. So it is a serious point here. Then a reconciliation and a relating and relating to enemies. Now, when we look at this point, it tells us that when we are not forgiving, we lose the focus of doing the right thing. So we must forgive, we must be kind, we must be lovable, and the, the love must cut the cross, being elderly person, young people, non-denominational members, it cuts the cross. So that is all about relating to enemies. And the, we have not done anything for God. That's why we are called his children. And for that matter, we should also love every person that is advantaging us in the name of an enemy, the same way God loves us. Push us to another side. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Push to another side. Hello? Hmm. To another slide? Yes. Um, reconciliation and fellowship of believers. We have this keyword, conflict status. My dear listener, we normally have conflict just from the age difference. You find that the elderly people have conflict with the young ones, which is or the conflict of the, among the believers, and also gender. There is gender difference. This one is very common. When you look at our society today, gender disparity is there. But as we study Model 6, we are looking at reconciliation and the fellowship of believers. Now, as we are brought together under the Of Jesus Christ. This kind of conflict status, like the ethnic differences, political differences, and theological disagreement, where we have many options, having uh, additional doctrine on what to come to understanding that God Himself has created all these status for a matter. We cannot be politicians and we cannot be at the same age, that is to say, 50 or 20 or 10. But all these stage brackets are for the purpose. It is to prepare this generation after generation. And gender helps to produce generation after generation as we work in common. This income is also to enable us to support the church. Hmm? It's also to enable us to support the church. Now, when you look at the ratio 
conflict. If it is that um, God cuts across in a form of God, there's nothing like right. But politics, we need to play Jesus' politics of salvation. Now, if you forgive others, their first party, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your first party. That is from the reading of Matthew chapter 6, verses 15 through uh, 14 through 15. Now, we compare it with enemies. There are reasons why we should reconcile with the enemy. Reason number one is God is the only judge. Why should I judge these ambassadors, these young people, because of the changes they are undergoing? We need to be redemptive. We need to be sympathetic. We need to be empathic as we deal with them. We need to have compassion that is indiscriminate love. We also need to become, uh, we become helpful if we don't. So, my dear listeners outside there, as SYR leader, we are called not to be hateful. We are called to be forgivers. People who can forgive and forget. People who are kind and love it. Then, now when we forgive, when we reconcile with our enemy, it changes others positively. You know, the way we interact among ourselves as leaders, will also create a lot of impact. It will it will appear like we have an agony on us for us by doing the right the right thing before God and before the world. And because of that, Satan loses to hold on an individual. And when Satan loses to hold on an individual, this being becomes the mirror of God. They actually portray the image of God's mercy to the world. Finally it assures our own reconciliation with the God. It tells the world that personally I'm reconciled with the God. That is why I'm now reconciling with it, my, 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 my enemy for the person we are in conflict with. So when we handle this model six, it is telling us that in life, there are always conflicts in life, but God is our chief reconciliator. Now, as he is our chief reconciliator, he wants us to portray his mercy before the world. And he wants the Satan to lose. And we should act as a family. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, in the next slide, we have communication, communicating the story of reconciliation. My dear friend, one of the most beautiful stories of reconciliation is the story of Prodigal Son, the Prodigal Son. I wish we were all there during that time. And I wish one of us happened to be one of the Prodigal Son who took all his portion from the father and went away. But after experiencing difficult times, and he came back with ten days. This is the man who thought to himself to come back to his father. My dear listener, we are the two, and I am the two examples of the prodigal son. And this is the clear de declaration of reconciliation, how God reconciles us to himself. Here we find God working to reconcile both of his son to himself. Now, when we look at this story here, this age, it has its own challenges. These people, the ambassador 16 to 21 age bracket, they are in high schools and they undergo serious challenges. They have peer pressure, they have uh, financial constraints, they have uh, family issues. Sometimes their parents are divorced. Sometimes because of disaster and pandemic, uh, parents are not there and if they head of the family, so they have many challenges. But at times, when they are not counseled well, they go astray like this protocol term. But here the Bible is asking us, as we handle these young people, we need to consider them as they come to us because repentance is spiritual. So the question is asking, which are you? How do you personally need to respond to the father attempt to at reconciliation? My dear friend, it calls us to be intentional. 
to accept the Holy Spirit to work in us, to allow God to speak to us. Now, when God is speaking to us, the transforming power comes from the Holy Spirit. It is not mechanical. Neither physically, it comes through the Holy Spirit to call ourselves to God and accept the personal weaknesses. From that personal weaknesses, it is what transforms one's life and brings to what we are calling um, reconciliation. Now, we are coming to communication. You know, communication is a means of passing message from one person to another through different means where we have the, we have the message, we have the sender, and we have the receiver or the recipient. In this case, they are saying, say what you mean, or mean what you say. In this case, um, it is good for us leaders of SYL to be consistent. When I say no, which is right before God, I must stand there. And when I say yes, which is right before God, I must stand there. But I must not say no or yes on a judgmental side because God is the sole judge for humanity. Now, what is your, your the, the, the statement here is, what is your word, action, and habit? My dear listener, we came from far. You see me speaking to you today, I also came from far. Jesus reconciled me from my word, from my action, and from my habit. Now, when we look at these three, we find that these young people, they have challenges in this, especially in this era of computer. Our mode of communication, people are not saying themselves in talking. Eh? They don't control their words and their actions due to what they are calling the human rights. And because of that, they, they, they need to know the, the, the lifestyle of the, the habit which is pleasing for both. So they are saying in communication, 7% words are, uh, we, we only speak 7% in communication as a word. No, 38% is what we are calling tone we use to speak. How do I speak? Now, when, when you have these young people, what tone do I use? Do I have a sense? Remember, this canal, senior youth group, where we don't need to command, but we need to Cancel. We need to guide. We need to advise. But what term do we use? Now, when we use what term, and to these people, it's like we don't feel like we are repelling them from the word reconciliation. The same way God calls us, my son, my daughter, who hear my voice, come back to me. I mean, I'm here for you. My dear listeners, it is hard to handle this age group because. Our lifestyle based on cultural differences because there are some cultures which are very tough on the young people, but the Bible has a master culture of culture is telling us to change our tone so that we handle these young people in a way which is appropriate. Then finally, facial expression. <laughs> My dear people, I want to tell you one example. When you go to our neighbors in Karamoja there, when there is a conflict between uh, one tribe and, and another tribe, they send the young people, the warriors, to go and see. Now, when those people are coming, but they don't ask them, what have you found on the ground? They only study their faith. I want to tell you that as leaders, our faith talks more than any other thing, because here it is 55%, meaning that we must not put on a tough faith. Neither gloomy effect. When dealing with young people, when dealing with any community, when dealing with anybody, so that people can see Jesus in us. That is why in the Bible here, in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Dear children, let us not love with the word or speech with action. Dear children, let us not love with the word or speech with action. Here I say action speaks more than words. Or more than words. In this case, it is from the facial expression that determines 
how you are going to perform that particular activity. Now, when you look at the findings of other people, they say um, our, our face when we when, when, when we when we make our face very tough automatically, we are here. In fact, we lose the sense of focus in this case because it is the first part, the first impression of communication in this case. Even before you write a letter, your face will tell you how you are going to write. Even before you talk, the face will tell you how to write. So here in this case, we are supposed, we are advised not to love words hmm? or speech, but action. So my dear friends, as readers, let them to act positively in a way that can please our master who is Jesus Christ. So uh, when we look at communication, it is a key role in nurturing. Now, as it is a key role in nurturing, we have another thing which is called another subheading which is uh, saying relationship. You know, when we talk of relationship, there is what we are calling as a positive relationship and negative relationship. That is to say, relationship which is pleasant to Jesus Christ and relationship which is pleasant to, uh, to the world. But in this context, we are looking at relationships with the people who are who are surrounded us, or with the people whom, whom you stay. And here they say, the people we relate with, they have a huge impact on who you become, what to become, what you say, and how you act. And the husband here is choose people to associate with wisely. Now, when you choose your friends wisely, you will you will not lose. In fact, you will start it. Most people speak about 125 words a minute, and yet our brain can easily understand 400 words per minute. What we don't do well is listening at all. My dear listeners, as SYL leaders, I want to assure you the biggest gap we have in leadership and in handling this ambassador's club is it listening. Let's hear what our brother James is saying from his book, chapter 1, verse 19. It says, Everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, so as becoming angry. My dear friend, I believe we are all Africans. Some people, they believe in actually not allowing somebody to complete his or her expression before interjecting. But here the Bible is saying we need to listen first before we pass the judgment. And in a Christ, Jesus gives a listening ear. Yes, we are called to be very keen as we handle these people at the young group. Listening is very important. It, it is key in developing young people into a relationship. Now, growing relationships. We have dating of relationships and we have their courtship. We have their courtship. Uh, in this case, they say, although there is not much from dating in the Bible, for various reasons, there are terms of practical principles. Mm -hmm. The terms of practical principles. Now, let's look at some of these questions uh, before we go there. This thing in this case, it is telling us that in this case bracket, this is where they are preparing for parenthood, for being a mother, for being a father. What do you do? What do you do mm -hmm. as you prepare? Here they're saying the quality. How do you treat the opposite sex when unmarried? In this era, when the opposite sex meets, whether they are married or not unmarried, especially we are having this, this group of ours who are church-related people, church, church members, some who are not trained on how to relate, they look at unmarried as a meet. But let me tell you, young people, not every child is a woman. 
neither every poison, a set of poison is a man. Here, you are asked to see how the opposite sex, I mean, or you, what qualities on the spouse, hmm? what qualities to look for in a spouse. And in here, the Bible is giving us an example between Isaac and Rebecca. Now, when you look at Isaac, Abraham, and Rebecca, when, when we study from the Bible, it tells us that um, uh, was also from within that family. But no, Isaac looked for that quality that was within their faith. But what about our people today? They prefer looking for qualities from outside, educational background, uh, physical beauty, this brown, that brown, or whatever, whatever kind. But they don't consider uh, spiritual beauty or spiritual character, which is also very key in this matter. Why? That is the reason why we have Isaac and Rebecca here. So we need to tell them such a uh, group that when choosing for a spouse, the first part, there may be other factors will come later. But what the most important thing in courtship is it um, is faith. Then the church leader should be aware. The parents of the girls, the parents of the girls, the boys should also be aware. This is not the church since it is God's ordained matrimony. We need to involve the church leaders, the parents, so that we get a blessing. The same way Isaac and, Isaac and Rebecca did. And another factor you need to consider is how to treat your and husband as Jesus treats the church. Uh, in our culture, uh, in our culture as well, I thank God because God is now bringing us on the same boat by saying we should not only look at those, but we should now begin to look at spiritual aspects of these children and we nurture them spiritually in their family so that they also become who are nurturing in future. So in this case, uh, we should not treat others the same way Jesus speaks of that. Yeah, since we are the body of Jesus Christ, Jesus has never beaten us, okay, in the attitude of God. Jesus handled that biblically through his kind words. Therefore, uh, we should also consider this. There's a system which is saying the difference between dating, friendship, and courtship, spousal. Dating, according to them, is saying opposite, opposite attract, <laughs> but similarities attach. My listeners outside there, that, that, that means they only want to satisfy their sexual desire. But when it comes to similarity attached, that means the unattachment, the unattachment in, the, in the marriage, and also that attachment. That attachment is what it makes people to lose focus in this case. So, for this matter, um, premarital counseling is extremely important in this case. They say 86% for wedding time, they do for marriage. My young people, I want to caution you don't come for wedding, but come for marriage. This case is what we are calling similarity and and the similarity is what we share, is the part of the faith that we share. The common element that we share is what makes marriage meaningful. And they say, and revealing truth about marriage. Example, a soulmate is someone you become over time, not someone you find. Meaning that when opposites are trapped, they are for a short time. But similarities are attached there for a long time. So let's have the attachment instead of action. We shall stay longer in marriage, and God will bless us in our marriage. They're saying, watch how she treats her father and how he treats his mother. This statement is political, uh, true in the sense that uh, at this age, of ambassador, 16 to 8 to 13, love their, their father. Boys 
love their parents for a reason. And the reason be for for them, they don't want their mother to prepare them for motherhood as the parents will be comforting them and talk to the boys. But in this case, when you see uh, when you see this thing happening, you realize that both parents play a role in preparing uh, the boy and the girl for parents goal. So we are all to be conscious about this as we handle, as we actually matter these people. When a boy comes to you as a leader who is a male, we need to handle them in a nurturing way. When a girl comes to you as a leader who is a, who is a female, please handle him as, uh, as he has come so that we prepare both for spouse or for parenthood. Now, when we look at marriage and parenting, my dear listeners, I want to tell you that marriage is a school of personal growth. And the, the words from the white day, it's one to graduate. And I've never told anybody who have entered into marriage and have graduated. I therefore call upon you, call upon my fellow leaders to bear in mind that as we handle this club, we should tell them that marriage is a commitment for life. And marriage is exceptional attachment that good itself, God comes in to bond the marriage, and God is not happy to separate. Here they say people who stay married live four years longer than those who don't. That is point number one. Meaning that single life we are living today. We need to tell our young people that after your level of education, we go without your come back, talk to your parents, do some work, and then we generate some income where we can support ourselves to marry so that we don't go back to the generation influence where people who are educated are now not willing to marry, going against those plans. Then they say 80% of divorced couples say because they just grew up. That means they 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 they, 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 they only got a class, okay. but they had no similarity. So when we grew together in the church and the same place, my dear listener, there, there is no reason as to why we divorce. But when we got a first case, of course we can get divorced because what I admired has now disappeared. But here we should talk, we should have God first in our marriage, we should have God first. In everything we are doing so that the marriage we shall be coming into must be a lifelong. Now let's read from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. It is said, A man shall leave his father and cleave. A man shall leave his father and mother and pull back to his wife. This statement is saying, Man shall leave. That means they are going to get attached together. Now, when they get attached together, in other words, they say, we cleave. Now, when they cleave, automatically, they will be one body, neither two. So, my fellow leaders, uh, this more nurturing and nurturing good relationship is all about family building, preparing our people, our young people for marriage. And as leaders, we need to handle them in a way that has prepared them to be here. So may God bless us in this presentation. I beg to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, thank you very much, uh, Elder Wena, for that presentation. I hope everyone was really attentive. Uh, this presentation was so much amazing. Um, uh, this session now, first time is not on our side, has been noting some of the important concepts that were left on by these two presenters, but Julio uh, and then Elder Wena Francis. Uh, lead us to the question and answer bit or bit. 
uh, dear viewers and members out there, from the presentation that we have actually seen, I'm sure we have questions. As Pastor Kojo was making this presentation, a question from Pastor Jacob Red, who was asking, can you explain the phrase, God doesn't call the qualified, but qualifies the call? I think that question was directed to Pastor but I'm sure I am due to issues of network. Um, I'm inviting questions. The platform is open for our members who are out there. Uh, as the presentation was going on, I saw a number of participants online, and uh, it was amazing. Now we have reduced to 37, but it's okay, we can still move on. Yeah, members? Do we have questions? Now, let me direct the floor to Madam Esther. Thank you so much, Brother Oscar, our MC. Thank you so much, Elder Awena, for taking us through that great presentation. Module 6, which is talking about nurturing godly relationships. I want to thank God for that great presentation. Now, in nurturing godly relationships, just as Elder Awena has discussed with us, it involves relationship with fellow human and then relationship with God. In relationship with fellow human, that is where we, he has discussed the last point of, you know, courtship and marriage and all that. And then relationship with God is emphasized. So friends, as we teach the apostles, we need to be very clear and help ambassadors to bring out the key important areas. So I want to thank our presenters for today for taking us through uh, module five, that was by Pastor Kojo Lambert and module six by Elder Awena. So I don't know if there are any questions or Brother Oscar, if you can read some in the comment in the chat room, if there are any questions in the chat room. I don't know if there are any questions um, in the chat room. Uh, so you can read them uh, for us, the questions, or if the participants have any questions so um, that we are able to close. Room, the first question was asked by Pastor Justin Perez. Was saying, can you explain the phrase God doesn't call the qualified, but qualifies the call? I think I have two questions online here. Um, one has been one has been posted by one has been posted by what I just been saying. How can we help those who may have the heart to do God's work? But yeah, thank you very much, what I just for that question. I'll be just a two questions here and then. I got another observation from uh, Julia. He says, thanks to presenters for today. My observation is that if all churches can embrace mm -hmm. that ministry, we shall have leaders and renew life in our church. Thank you very much. Now uh, we can address uh, uh, Dr. Isaac's question. He says, how can we help those who may have the heart to do God's work but are fearful? This question is directed to the floor. And then, Dr. Uh, Felix from Eastern Uganda Field also says, how long, how long does courtship and dating take? Oh, Thank you very much, Dr. for that question. I think this, we can direct to Dr. Wena Francis. And then, also, the other question asked by Elder, by, 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 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, um, you can have uh, Elder Werner have the floor and he can respond to uh, some of these questions. How long does courtship and dating test by Doya Felix from Eastern Nevada Field? Thank you very much. Am I on? Okay. Um, that question is very interesting. I love that. I want to thank the, the one who asked that question. But here in this case, I want to address by beginning from the three heads. We have the head, we have the hand, we have the, the heart. My young people, they think that is why the writer says it is not written in the Bible for many reasons. The Bible wants us to be there before we come into this sort of commitment. Now, how do we prepare? We mobilize resources. Then you involve the parents, your parents. Then you involve the church leaders. Now, as you involve the church leaders, these two children are now brought together. So you sit down on a round table to discuss the requirements, the demand, and we see a way of helping this children. It is not all about doubt. It's all about mutual understanding in a spiritual manner. That is why it does not have a specified period of time for courtship. Reasons why it is not encouraged in our church is that it promotes immorality among young people. It encourages abortion, which is very sinful before God. It promotes uh, people to become liars. Uh, and it has made many of our young people to end up in disappointment and leaving the church because of courtship and dating. So my dear young people, I don't want to commit myself that it is one year, two years, no. I am saying, when you see yourself ready for marriage, consult the church leader, that is the church elder, and then you involve the parents of the ground, you involve the, the church pastor, who is a Levite, to see a way to help you so that we are not lost in this era of uh, uh, sexual desire. I think that is how I can put it right. Mm, thank you very much, Dawana, for that information. Um, my brother, I hope you are contented with that answer for Elder Awena. Now we have, I think we have, we have, we have, we have addressed one question. However, I can see still two more questions left. About the night that says, how can we help those who may have the heart to do God's work but are fearful? Uh, that one, as I wait for our leader to summarize the, the question, um, when one is called by God, the element of fear is arranged off by the Holy Spirit. So, that the, 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 the attitude of fear for men, it is accompanied by cowardice under the umbrella of sinfulness. So when one is fearful, that means there is a hidden sin in that person. But we can take up courage when we are being led by the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the question of when one is fearful, how can you encourage that person? Let the person get committed to Jesus Christ and seek guidance from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will give him strength, energy, and will to do the work. It is not a physical work, but it's a spiritual work. The Holy Spirit will do its work. Thank you very much. Oh, amazing. That's very interesting. Um, dear members, I hope you've been attentive and you've really observed some of these comments. Now, we have the last question from Pastor Jasper Perez. I don't know if he's still online. Can you explain the way God doesn't call the qualified? But qualify the God. I think it's a moment. Uh, on the behalf of my co-presenter, is uh, I want to try to answer to answer this question in this way. When he says God does not, God doesn't call the qualified, but qualifies the God. It is telling us that my qualification as a teacher is not a matter to God. 
But my commitment to serve him is what God is willing. My heart to serve. It is what they qualify me. Like, like when you see from the Bible, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. But when he saw Jesus, Jesus never saw him as a tax collector. But he saw the potential in Zacchaeus. Similarly, it happened also to Matthew. Matthew was a revenue collector. But their professions were in line with it, accountants. But Jesus saw the potential of handling his work in them. So it is where God is now qualifying our profession. And not our profession qualifying us for the mission. This brings me to some of the songs that come and what he says. God doesn't need an orator who knows just what he says. God doesn't need an army to guarantee him a win. God doesn't need an authority. The reason that is very interesting. Uh, thank you very much, dear members in the chat room. Before we can come to the closure of our session, I want to have a, a final closing remark from Madame Esther Weiser. As previously, I told you, our choir is ready. I don't know if they should be that last after Madame Esther's remark, or they can they can they can make a presentation now and then Madame Esther will close the remarks. Yeah, I think they can sing, then we pray. And, uh, the, the choir can sing, then we can pray.
appreciation before we go. Thank you so much for, for attending today's uh, Zoom with module five and module six. We want to thank God that we are moving on well. And uh, we are only left with one module and then we'll also teach you uh, a session in young adult ministry. I believe by now you can be able to teach ambassador module I believe by now you can be able to lead and at least guide in one of the six modules we have covered. We expect to have powerful ambassador clubs in our churches. So that from the number of about 30 clubs or 40 clubs countrywide, we'll be able to have over a hundred clubs. We need to set <coughs> to set a target of how many clubs we should have. Even if we are in COVID, we can open up uh, ambassador clubs and we can have ambassadors study one hour. You can have Zoom for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. There's always a free Zoom. It only lasts for 40 minutes, 40 minutes. And you keep on resuming so that we can put some of these things in practice. We want to thank Northern Uganda Field for leading us very well. You have been so organized. God bless you. And send greetings to the Amucha. 
I was wondering if there is still something great in Amucha. We have tested it. <laughs> so keep, we expect a strong ambassadors club in Amucha, brother Oscar. <laughs> you begin with those ones there in Amucha to have ambassadors club. You've seen all these wonderful presentations that we do in ambassadors club. So want to thank brother Oscar for leading us very well. Our elder Awena since yesterday and he was a presenter today. Want to appreciate Pastor Kojo in absence uh, for leading us very well together with brother, with brother Kanyonyi. So next uh, Sabbath, next weekend we shall be winding up ambassador modules and then we shall also talk about young adult ministry. So God bless you friends and uh, have a wonderful week. And God bless you as we put in practice. I don't know, Oscar, who is praying for us that we can end this session. Perhaps before we end, Mama, let us take a photo. Yeah, photo. yeah. yeah we need to take a photo. Uh, yes. <laughs> Please, can we turn on our videos and we take a group photo? Uh, yes. Oh, friends, thank you for your patience, Brother Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, Sister Miriam, uh, Brother Doya Felix, Hilda Mwebaza. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for staying on up to now. Brother Mumbere Kisom, thank you so much for staying on. Let's take a group picture so that we can be able to close and then be Able to even By the way, you also need to take us a picture because this will be a proof that you've been attending SYL also. <laughs> so if you don't have the proof, it is it, it may be funny. If you can put it in your file, it will be very interesting. Let me hope Brother Kuruga has taken the photo. He's taking the photo as I'm also taking. I'm so friends, we appreciate your time. We appreciate all that you have done to make sure that this attend this zone. So thank you so much. So brother Oscar, who is praying for us? Oh, I think he has his off. Okay. Can we have uh I think Jimmy Muhindo has put up the hand. She would give us the closing prayer. <laughs> yes, well, well, I did. Yes, Jimmy, okay. you can unmute yourself and pray. Yeah. Okay, fine. I think you can hear me. Yes, members. Uh, yeah, thank you for the class. Thank you, Brother Kruger, and thank you, our leader, Mama Esther Waiswa and all the leaders in the respective fields that are presented today. So let's pray. Almighty loving Father, in a special way, we thank you for Uganda Union, and we thank you for the youth ministry and for the SYR class. We thank you for today and yesterday, and for all the presentations that have happened Father, may you give us your own wisdom so that we can understand to lead the Ambassadors Club, the Adventurers Club, and the Pathfinder Club, and also the Master Guides, Lord. Father, may you lead us through to complete this SYR class for your own glorification. May whatever we study every day in each module, be able to be understood well, but most importantly, practice in our own local churches so that we can build strong clubs in our local churches. We thank you for the church leaders at all levels and we pray for the sick in the name of Jesus Christ. We all pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. ah. Now, Mama, according to our program, uh, yes. according to the program Ruth had earlier on prepared as our general secretary, next yes. summer uh, we are going to have uh, guidance given to us from uh, Central Uganda Conference. Ruth, am I right? 
Yes, you are. You're right, Dennis. And uh, we are very delighted. Uh, the coordinator, Sister Mariam, is already on. Mariam, we're really <laughs> counting on you for coordination. I'm we here. really appreciate the partial information you've given to us. We hope you'll do the coordination. And I'm help. here. Next Sabbath, we have KCC Youth Leading on Sabbath, on 7th. And then on uh, 8th, we have uh, Mitiana Youth Leading us. So uh, we are ready. Wow, that's very great. Uh, we beg, we pray that the Lord will give us guidance and will really allow you present to us safely. So participant, thank you well for attending, uh, for the patience. Eh? We have had issues of network, but we are very great that you really kept through and uh, to the end. Eh? Yeah. Okay, thank you friends. We meet next weekend. I am just traveling now back to Kampala, uh, but I'll uh, travel to Bujiri first this evening. So allow me also to travel back since most of you are in your homes. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> and um, we'll end the meeting.